Hello, this is Mr. Murphy, and welcome to today's lecture. Today, uh, we'll be working in idea one, part one of one, our first one, general biology, right? And with that is, how do we know if something is considered alive? What does living mean? And how do scientists define what to study in biology, which we know as the study of life? Now, what is biology? Biology is the study of living things the vital processes, and known as the field of study that deals with this, uh, I always have trouble with this word, physiochemical aspects of life, right? It's the study of things that are living, whether it's your dog, whether it's you, whether it's bees, butterflies, plants. Biology is when we study anything that's living. And biology overlaps with many other sciences. You have chemistry and with this subsection of biochemistry. You have physics, the subsection of biophysics, and psychology, which is really a subsection turns into behavioral neuroscience, right? We are a walking, talking chemical equation, essentially. You need to understand chemistry to understand how we work. But also, we have to understand the way in which our bones and our skeletal structure works as levers and simple machines with our muscles, which would require biophysics. And psychology is just trying to figure out how the brain works, which the brain is a biological mass filled of cells, right? Biology is also subdivided into many of its own areas and studies of focus. If you want to study plants, that's botany. If you want to study animals, that's zoology. And organisms and their environment, you're looking at ecology. You're looking at how all of these living things are interacting with all of the non-living things in its space. So what exactly are these living things? Well, we refer to them as organisms. An organism is a life form that consists of one or more living cells. It's essentially a living thing. Congratulations, you're an organism. Anything that we define as living is an organism. And so, however, within biology, the science of biology has established five general rules of all living things, and these living things must follow them to be considered alive. So that we know it's alive, it, we kind of have to follow these five rules, which is one, Cells, is it made up of cells? Two, does it replicate? Does it make more of itself? Three, does it pass on and respond to various types of information? Four, it acquires and uses energy. And five, undergoes evolution over time. So cells, well, cells are the smallest functional unit of life. Cells are a membrane bound and regulate materials moving from their internal or inside and external or outside environment. All living things must consist of one or more cells. That is a rule of things that are living. If you are not made up of a cell, you are not considered living and technically <laughs> not entirely part of biology, but it gets weird with stuff like viruses. Like it, it's still kind of biology, but that's, that's for down the road. Where a cell, it's exchanging O2, CO2, water. It's just also exchanging larger molecules like glucose in and out of it. It's functioning as its own separate living organism. So we say all cells are the smallest function unit of life and everything living thing must consist of one or more cells. Now, a living thing also has to be able to replicate or reproduce. To be considered living, organisms must replicate. They must make more copies or versions of themselves. It doesn't always have to be perfect copies. One organism creates more organisms and that's how you reproduce. Bacteria colonies grow and grow and grow. They do it asexually by cloning themselves. Trees disperse their seeds for their various offspring. You've seen them around acorns, um, maple helicopters that fall down. Right, They're part of sexual reproduction between um, the tree's flowers. And humans, we have offspring. We have children. Everybody was a child at one point. And so organisms create more organisms. They must replicate or reproduce. They also have to pass on genetic information and respond to general information. The information that is coded in all living organisms, it's called genes, right? These are the genetic units that contain our genetic information or the information coded in all of our cells that we pass down to our offspring. Cells within organisms use this information coded in genes to create various substances in which we call molecules. Now, molecules are groups of atoms that are chemically bonded together to form larger structures. Here I drew a quick picture of glucose, right? This is a simplified picture of what glucose actually is, but it's all these carbons and hydrogens and oxygens bonded together. It's a series of all these different atoms coming together to form a larger structure that is 
glucose. And there are some molecules that are thousands and thousands of atoms. And some are only three atoms. Water, H2O, that is three atoms, right? And so molecules are groups of atoms bonded together to form those larger structures. And organisms also have to respond to information present in an environment and adjust their internal environment to be stable. So not only do you pass on genetic information, you respond to essentially information in your environment. Stimulus is the word we use to describe information that an organism is responding to, right? Plants will grow towards the sun. Plants are not, well, plants do not have a nervous system like we do. They're still somehow responding to the stimulus that is sunlight. Same as us, if we're cold, you're gonna start shivering. Your body senses that it's cold and you respond to the environment by shivering to heat yourself up to generate more um, heat energy by utilizing your chemical energy. And with speaking of energy, all organisms must acquire and utilize energy. In order to stay alive, repair, or make more cells and reproduce, organisms must acquire and consume energy. Hawks eat rabbits and snakes. Algae uses the sunlight to grow, and hey, I eat donuts. I am acquiring and I am utilizing that energy, right? Organisms cannot be considered alive unless they are acquiring, consuming, and utilizing that energy. And organisms also must undergo evolution. An organism as a species, they change over time. A couple hundred thousand years ago, we were not Homo sapiens. And most likely in, a couple, in another couple hundred thousand years, we will not be Homo sapiens. So many species go extinct over time, but it's not a bad thing. They just change into different species or multiple different species, right? All organisms have undergone evolution and all organisms will continue to do so or they will die out. My favorite example are dinosaurs, how birds are modern day descendants of dinosaurs, right? It's a huge family history, but we have Archaeopteryx and we notice the, the, we essentially notice, I really like this photo. We essentially notice the feather pattern in Archaeopteryx and we're like, wait a minute. It's possible that the dinosaurs all did not go extinct. They just kept lightly changing over time from generation to generation to maybe having slightly smaller offspring or more complex beak structure offspring or they're losing their teeth in their beaks. But we can see these similar trends, but they have changed over the 65 million years to the wonderful, incredible modern day dinosaurs we have today, which are essentially all the different birds, right? Organisms undergo evolution over time. And really, we can all sort of wrap this up under the idea of the three theories. But first, I'd like to touch on that a theory is, and I quote, an explanation for a very broad class of observed phenomena that is supported by a wide body of evidence. In essence, the term theory for science discussion is a scientific idea that has loads and loads of evidence. There is so much evidence behind it. Some people say, well, the theory of evolution is just a theory. Well, it is just a theory, but it's made its way to a theory in the scientific community by having so much background evidence, right? We use the term theory in science very different from everyday usage of the word theory, which is like, I have a theory, which in everyday usage might not have as much evidence or have little evidence of to what this person's trying to accomplish. But these three major ideas of science have brought us to our understanding of the world of biology today. This is the cell theory, right? Kind of includes, and we'll go into more depth with these, but cell theory is like all living things are made up of cells, but all cells come from pre-existing cells, right? The chromosome theory of inheritance, you are passing down genetic information and it changes a little bit over time. And the theory of evolution is kind of that in practice and that the theory of evolution is organisms changing over time and adapting to their environment or not surviving. My, one of my favorite examples is a panda. One thing really interesting about pandas is they are getting a sixth digit. Rather than sort of using the like one of their first five digits, there is a wrist bone that is starting to get larger and larger over generations, and we're pretty sure it's because it helps the pandas manipulate eating bamboo, right? They're just changing over time, and we're seeing that this new bone is just coming out of the wrist, and it's potentially being used as a nub to help them eat. That's incredible. That's that change over time. You guys will learn I'm a little bit partial to evolution. It is my favorite thing to talk about because it's just so much cool change over time. All right, and so the three theories help us understand these following questions that really drive 
a lot of what we're trying to figure out with biology. What makes up living things? Where do organisms come from? How do children look like, but not exactly like their parents? How are all living things reated? Why are some organisms from the past no longer alive today? These are all questions I hope to answer in my series of lectures, and also have been answered extensively as well throughout the study of biology. There's just so much awesome to study in biology. So let's find out together. I'll be looking to make out more videos, like and subscribe or whatever the kids do with YouTube today. But together, let's do a deep dive on the entire science of biology and find out more about the living world around us. Yippee! Or you, you can just use this for studying or whatnot, just quick, quick bits of information when you need it. Um, really quick, I just wanted to always include my work cited of where I've been pulling my information from. And there you go. End of the lecture. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time.